Hi. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> Hi. I was gonna film earlier this morning and post before uh, picking up Katie from the airport, but it didn't work out that way. Way too tired. Got up a little bit later than I should have. So instead, we're just gonna do a really quick impromptu. She's back. I'm back. <laughs> I made it, I made it. Hi, buddies. Hi. Oh, my goodness, I missed you. Look oh, boys. Kinsley's like, what? Kinsley already said her hellos, and we're about to have a thunderstorm, and she doesn't like the thunderstorms. So she's like, get me back inside. Get me inside. Okay, Sorry. we'll be back really shortly. All right, we decided just to head inside and we're also gonna use the GoPro again today. So hopefully no audio issues. <laughs> it seemed like it was okay last time. Kinsley nose bumped me on my glasses. I have a <laughs> nose print right there now. Do you need to clean it off? It's okay. <laughs> so if I start looking cross-eyed, that's why. <laughs> well, welcome home. <laughs> missed you. I missed you. Ah, so nice to be home. Yeah. Oh, so nice to be home. It was a very, very long week. As my 12 hour day turned into a 14 hour day because we had a dinner after all of the meetings and that dinner we were there for over three and a half hours. It's a very long day, so. But it was good, it was productive. <laughs> That's good. I mean, we got, we got stuff done. That was the intent, <laughs> so. <laughs> I got stuff done too. Yeah, you did. Yeah, lots of stuff done. I just didn't have a three hour dinner. Yeah, I wish I wouldn't have had a three hour dinner. Yeah. <laughs> it was long. Yeah, it's a long dinner. It's too long to sit. And after you've been in meetings for almost 12 hours to sit, you're just like, I just want to go home. And you know me, I don't people well. <laughs> I'm a homebody. I, I like my privacy. Like I like my downtime. So at the end I was like, check. <laughs> <laughs> It was good. It was good. Good. But. So just a couple <clears throat> recap things. Um, cattle panels are up. Yes. So the, the three cattle panels per coop, so nine mm -hmm. panels were up and zip tied together. And they look awesome. Yeah. That video on the Kramer Life is coming out today at 430, which may come out before this video because we're recording so late, but I yeah. don't know. So it doesn't matter. Um, and then there's a couple comments I want to go over from yesterday's vlog, especially about the two chickens dying. Okay. And there's some people, there's some comments in there that uh, I want to address, mostly good suggestions. Um, but before I do that, I also want to mention that tomorrow... Yes. We have a busy day tomorrow. Oh, very busy. Oh, when do we not have a busy <laughs> That's day? True. <laughs> That's true. Um, <laughs> I would like Sundays and be not as busy. That'd yeah. be nice. So tomorrow we're going to do two things. We're going to be at the Farm Where You Live Festival in Asheville. Asheville North Carolina. Yep. Uh, Josh and Megan from Farm Where You Live invited us out. Yep. And we're excited to be able to attend that yeah. and see the vendors. More peopling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do some peopling, <laughs> attend some classes. Yep. We won't be there all day because at... 4.30ish, is that what you Around 4.30, I have an appointment to pick up some local chickens. Local meaning local-ish to well, they're in, Henderson. Yeah, North. they're in North Carolina, but they're close. Mm -hmm. um, but they'll be fully feathered, eight-week-old pullets, females, females hens. Yeah. They're going to be our laying stock. Correct. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, for breeding stock. Breeding stock is what I meant to yeah, say. Yeah, so they're purebred. Um, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna get because I'm the last appointment from the day and it's first it's usually first come first serve but he's been so busy that he's had to make appointments so there's no absolute guarantee that I'll get what I requested uh, but what I requested was I wanted some to match up with the boys that we already have so um, black osterlope females, salmon favorals, but I think unfortunately my salmon male didn't make it. Yeah. Um, so I'm not 100% sure if we'll get those or not. We might, and then we'll just have to get another male down the road. And then the um, 
we could, it, and then depends on what they have left in stock. But those were the two main ones that I was looking at um, for him. I have a list on my computer over there of what I actually requested, and I requested quantities. It's not going to be huge quantities of it, but um, like five per um, type of bird. And there's only 15 types of birds she's going to get. <laughs> not huge quantities at all. Not huge quantities at all. <laughs> It was like no more than 15 birds, I think. All right. It wasn't like a crazy amount. Yeah. All right. And we have a carrier to use for nope. transport. We have nothing ready. Okay. That's per usual. Yeah, that is. Winging it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. Farm Wheel Live Festival. Mm -hmm. Go pick up chickens. And yeah, it'll be a fun, fun day. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be filming at the Farm Wheel Live Festival. I don't know how much, but we will be doing that. Yeah. For those of you that are going um if you see us please stop and say hi we'd, yeah. we'd like to meet you uh, even though we're awkward and <laughs> <laughs> you know we still we still like to, to yeah meet, to meet, uh, <laughs> viewers in fact we had one today um when we were at the store so yep. it's it was cool yep hi lenny if you're watching <laughs> nice to meet you <laughs> uh, that was my second time i saw him yeah. at uh, the hardware store a couple weeks ago so comment wise let's i'm going to go back to yesterday's video this was yesterday's right mm -hmm. yeah, the days just go by so fast <laughs> so yesterday's video was the fact that we lost two meat birds two of the um murray mcmurray red broilers or mm -hmm. whatever they're called and that was actually the third bird that we lost mm -hmm. of theirs yeah uh-huh and um those two their vents were like just basically pecked mm -hmm. out yeah mm -hmm. and some somebody said that it might be a weasel which it could be but since it was only two and the whole flock wasn't really affected yeah i'm kind of ruling that out i don't think we've ever seen hmm. any evidence any evidence of weasels on the property thankfully and the dogs do a really good job of yes going after like rats and things like that that they see and they possums yeah unfortunately. They, unfortunately yeah but they definitely um pay attention mm -hmm. and they are they watch over the chickens a lot mm -hmm. yes so i don't think it's that um i there were some comments and i'm not going to uh, read them directly but basically it revolved around not having enough food mm -hmm. which i completely agree with that after thinking about it and seeing how much katie had fed them at one point and they just devoured the whole thing and then how much i fed them which was way too little it's like okay don't make that mistake again yeah. don't don't underfeed them because they are ferocious eaters they are it's crazy yep and then space not having enough space mm -hmm. i mean it's a pretty big um meat mobile that they have access to but they're getting bigger mm -hmm. and they just i think they need more space to roam on so what katie and i are going to do is we're going to expand the net around it and put up a string or fishing line or the scare tape or something just overhead that we can still walk underneath but that'll keep the aerial predators from coming down yeah and i think that'll work out and Work yeah, well. and the dogs will, they're really good when aerial predators, like they bark and they definitely alert. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but <laughs> they just can't be everywhere at once. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, this is a learning curve for yeah. us. And I, you know, we do take this very seriously and I feel really bad about those, those chickens. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're learning, we're learning as we go. So there was a comment here says the old red barn is gorgeous. Uh, even in its condition, which is in pretty good condition. It just needs a little TLC. So they're like, have you considered having artist workshops on your property to paint? Um, so we had thought about some sort of agritainment type of stuff. Yeah. We're nowhere near ready yeah. for having that kind of activity on the mm -hmm. farm, but it's not out of the question. I never thought about like an artist painting retreat mm -hmm. kind of thing, but that's a cool idea. Yeah. Especially once we get tents and stuff established, mm -hmm. then they could actually stay. But I think one of the big things right now, we just don't, it's not safe to have people out and wandering the property because we have so many dead trees that we still need to get out and take down that are falling. And we just don't, I mean, even when we have friends and guests and family over, we're still really nervous and we're making sure that everyone knows you need to pay attention. You need to be listening. You need to be looking up because mm -hmm. we've seen trees, like we've almost had branches fall on us. Mm -hmm. And so 
it, it just makes us nervous. So we, before we get into any of that, plus we have a lot going on already, <laughs> but before we get into that, we want to make sure that it's safe. We have the right insurance in place and that we're protected. Yeah. But I like the ideas. Like yeah, keep, if cool. you guys have those kind of ideas, throw them out, throw them out. Yeah. Cause um, you know, we may not be able to implement right away, but yeah. it may turn into something that, that works well for us. Yeah. And I love to paint too. So that'd be yeah. actually really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are several suggestions about getting getting guinea fowl or guineas. Guineas, yeah. Yeah. Guinea keats. Yeah. Saw um, some at the store today. We There's did. <laughs> I think it's a good idea. I think we both had talked about getting some guineas, but we were also afraid about uh, predator issues with mm -hmm. them. Yeah. But I don't I, I don't, I just don't know. I mean, the free range chickens seem to be doing just fine. Yep. Um, with the, with Winston and Levi, you know, keeping an eye out and, and the rooster keeping an eye out. I don't know, maybe guineas, guineas mm -hmm. would be fine. Yeah. Would be safe enough. I, you know, cause I would want them to be free ranging cause then they can do their job. Right. And. And just have a coop to come back to or an area to come back to at night. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it, I think we've, you know, kind of gone back and forth a lot on it. And it's like, well, at some point we always planned on getting them, I think, or trying them. Mm -hmm. um, I know you are nervous with how loud they can be. Yeah, you know, but we had Sir Crows a lot. Yeah, he was The dogs so bark loud. all the time. And really, honestly, the neighbors have not said anything about the noises. The neighbor on our west said they love the farm animal mm -hmm. sounds. Yep. And... Uh, Rita and Howie, who have four dogs, and and yep. our dogs bark at their dogs, just back and forth. They they like, they like it. They don't care. <laughs> so yeah, it's, so, it's interesting. So that's that worry for me has kind of gone away. I'm not too okay. worried about the extra noise. Um, but yeah, I would like to have our tick population yes. significantly decreased because yes, that's just gross, just yeah. gross. And they say that they do a good job with snakes mm. and ticks, mice, and snakes. And that'd be good. That's get great. Rid of, get rid of those mice. So far, the only snakes that we've seen are the the black rat snakes. Yeah, but I mean, they've gotten some chicks and they've gotten some eggs. Yep. So. Yep. Some people said they really enjoyed the sounds of mm -hmm. nature and the 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 sound of the creek. So that's cool. They want us to do more of those. Yep. And oh, that's the one I wanted to address. There was one question, and I think this was asked. You're like but oh. yeah, it's kind of a fish eye. It should be okay, oh, okay. but um, so this was asked twice. Why the second channel? Why not just do these on the regular Kramer Life video or channel? And it's because it's really different type of content. So it's not uh, it's not us doing projects. Mm -hmm. It's us talking about our daily stuff. Mm -hmm. We talk about the projects, but we're not going to do the projects. And the way that the YouTube algorithm currently works is if you don't necessarily have consistent type of material on your channel, they don't always promote the videos that are different from the regular videos. Plus, if you put out a video and it doesn't do well, the next video that you put out, YouTube will not promote. So if all of a sudden we're putting out these, these daily mm -hmm. talks where you know, say only 5% of our viewers watch would watch them. them. Mm -hmm. Then the next time we put out a regular Kramer life style video, it won't be promoted mm -hmm. as much and it will, it'll be, it'll suffer. It's, you know, it, it just won't do well. So since it is, even though we're, we're talking about the same stuff and we're covering the same homestead and our activities, we're doing it in a different way. Yeah. And so it just made sense to kind of segregate them. Yeah. And we figured so, not everyone wants to listen to us talk a lot because uh, we do get comments on the video of like, hey, you talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> but then we also get comments, you not enough talking. Or, yeah. It's, yeah. it's always, it's always it, something. It's a back and forth. You know, somebody <laughs> so. said in here that they hate watching, they have a hard time watching the ones with with music because it it's hard for them to hear what's going on. So mm -hmm. they end up just turning it off or go to a different channel. So they really enjoy these. But then we have the other people that they really like the work stuff with yep. the music and, <laughs> and they don't like the all yeah. the talking head stuff. So, so now you have both options. So now we have both. <laughs> yeah. Or if you enjoy them both, welcome. <laughs> right. Um, a J James <clears throat> commented about his unfortunate issue mm -hmm. where they bought uh, some land not too far from us. 
and he got bit by a tick and he actually got Lyme's disease, went through some invasive treatment um, and- Intensive. Yeah, intensive, thank you. And <laughs> probably invasive too. Probably. <laughs> Uh, thankfully, he made a 100% recovery, but he's like, Nate and Katie, like, be very careful mm -hmm. because even the small ticks can yeah. can do it. So I guess he was, he uses some sort of, he uses permethrin spray mm -hmm. on his boots and his outside Pants. gear. Yeah, and that stuff will last like six weeks, even through a wash. And so I had bought permethrin spray to do the same thing. Um, and Levi and Levi ate the sprayer for oh. it. Thankfully, there was nothing in it. So I just recently got a new sprayer so I can spray my boots and my outside clothes with it because I wanted to do the same thing. Yeah. So I don't know if you want me to spray your stuff, but I will. And let's see here. I, I think that was really it. It was about the, the meat chickens and the fact they need more food, more space, mm -hmm. and then the guinea fowl and the tick population because those are... Yeah. Yeah. All valid points. All valid points. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. so Karen said, I know it's falling down, but have you thought about fixing the building they use for chickens? So I think she's referring to the corn crib. Corn crib, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that could be a viable source once we kind of move operations more Back. that direction. We still think that there might be some uh, wildlife issues, coyotes mm -hmm. and raccoons and whatever yeah. out, out over there. Plus that... Um, that corn crib is in really pretty bad shape and it'd be really easy for wildlife mm -hmm. to get in from underneath. Yeah. But we had talked about utilizing a different building that's closer to us and maybe we can talk about that in a different episode for our chicken operation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we we do plan on there, the, the barn where the turkey vulture is in that has the egg that one's coming down we're not gonna we're not gonna save that one we're gonna save the materials and mm -hmm. reuse all the materials that we can the the roofing all of the big nice beautiful wood pillars siding and we're going to use that for a couple different projects um hopefully a cabin down the road but we're also going to use it where we can to fix the barns that we do want to fix mm -hmm. And then we, there's um, the gray barn and the red barn that we talk about all the time. Those are the two main barns that we're going to fix up and we've been starting. We've cleared around them. We've fixed the roof so that they're not getting additional damage. They're just getting like we're just we're not fixing them right now, but we're keeping them from getting worse. Mm -hmm. And then the there's another it's like kind of like a machine shed type thing that we're looking at and we're checking out to see how structurally sound it is and we think that's going to be another one we're going to save mm -hmm. um, and potentially use for for our chicken operation yeah, or for a farm store or for mm -hmm. something we haven't fully decided yeah. yeah something yeah because it's pretty accessible to the road once we clear things out and yep. yeah so and you know we do plan on selling eggs we plan on obviously selling chickens and um selling fertilized eggs as well so eggs for consumption eggs that are fertilized um that you can hatch out on your own and then also uh baby chicks and we'll probably look at selling uh either fully feathered chicks or a little bit older that they're already laying so we'll have you know, we're working on how we can get this really set up and established. So no matter what type and what age of bird you're looking for, we would, you know, have a lot of options. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's all kind of the planning stuff that we're working towards. So infrastructure is going to be a big, yep. a big thing and utilizing what we have where we can absolutely because we don't want to buy in everything new and build in everything new when we have these beautiful buildings it's just repurposing them and making sure that they're safe mm -hmm. for what we need them because again the trees around them we have to make sure they're not going to fall on the buildings and you know around the animals and yeah making sure we're secure and that they latch up nice yeah. <laughs> so a whole little thing. bit of work <laughs> just just a little bit just a little bit just of work bit. <laughs> so yeah. yeah that's kind of where we're at yeah so i think that's a good uh mm -hmm. recap for today so this is the last uh keeping it kramer vlog for the week yep we'll be back on monday yeah for more uh, i think we have kind of a special uh, special plan for monday's video which we will tell you about on Monday. <laughs> so come back. <laughs> so yeah, make sure you come back. And if you're not subscribed, you can't watch. So you gotta subscribe it. You gotta subscribe. 
Just joking. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching and supporting us. And we will see you on Monday. All right. Unless we see you this weekend at the Farm Where You Live Festival in Asheville. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye.